Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to episode 114 of the Axial Skeleton Podcast. My name is Philip Acevedo. Glad to have you with us in here, out there, wherever you are, whether you're listening to on SoundCloud, whether you're listening to iTunes, wherever you're listening to this. I just want to say thank you for tuning in, episode 114. Let's get to it. But before we get started, um, there are a couple of um, websites I would like to direct to you and to check out. Um, if you have some extra bucks, if you have some extra cash in your bank account, it'd be really cool if you could go ahead and uh, make a couple of donations to Las Vegas and to Puerto Rico. Our friends in Puerto Rico, uh, we all know that there was a huge uh, hurricane just within the last week. Um, it's not too late to make some donations. You can go on UNIS, um, UNICEFUSA.org, uh, for, and you can also go to the RedCross.org. You can go to directrelief.org. Um, this will; these are all uh, charities and donations that are linked in within the um, all the madness and the uh, the sadness that's going on in Puerto Rico. So, if you got some extra cash, let's help out our friends out there in Puerto Rico. Also, for the terrorist attack that happened on Sunday night in Las Vegas, um, if you want to uh, go ahead and donate some funds for that as well you can also go to gofundme.com um right now the current goal is 10 million dollars and right now as i'm checking to you as i'm recording this right now they're at 8.9 million dollars so they're very very close guys we're very very close we i didn't organize this (laughs) but they um the people that organized this gofundme for the las vegas victims it's called uh the las vegas victims fund and their goal is to hit 10 million and like I said, they're 8.9 and, you know, with your, it's not too late. <clears throat> it's not too late to make a donation here um, for our friends in Las Vegas and also to our friends in Puerto Rico. If you got some extra cash lying around, if you are just want to make a generous donation, you're more than welcome to go ahead. But um, yeah, so check out GoFundMe, check out Red, uh, Red Cross, check out the um, SaveTheChildren.org as well and DirectRelief.org as well. Okay, so... That takes care of that. Uh, We have a great episode for you for uh, episode 114. Like I said, once again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about all the craziness that's going on in this beautiful country of ours. I think my buddy Andrew on Twitter said this, my beautiful, dark, twisted country. (laughs) We're going to talk a little bit about my beautiful, dark, twisted country known as the United States of America. And uh, later on, we're all going to talk about some more movie news. Some more uh, news in sports, and let's see, Super Nintendo. Oh, is that what I got right here? Yeah, I'm looking at the list of topics that we're going to be discussing today, so stick around. We got a good one for you today, episode 114 of the Exoskeleton Podcast. Let's hit that music. I accept your challenge. Check it, check it, check it, check it out. And now. Oh, yes. All right, let's do this. Episode 114. Full effect. Skadoosh. Big old skadoosh on that one. Episode 114. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Ah, uh, man, wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this, if you're on your way to the gym, if you're on your way to the work, if you're at the gym and listening to this podcast, shout out to you. That's fucking awesome. I think it's really cool. People have hit me up before in the past, and they'd be like, yo, Phil, yo, bro, man, I was at the gym, man, and I was listening to your podcast, and this part, would, when I, and, I, and I interrupt them, I'm like, hang on a second, dude. You're at the gym and you're listening to this podcast? That's fucking awesome, dude. Me, I'm fucking listening to... I'm listening to hip-hop. I'm listening to rap. I'm listening to some hardcore fucking... Or I'll be listening to some music, you know? That's what something that gets me pumped, dude, but... Uh, I try to listen to podcasts when I'm li- when I'm lifting or when I'm when I'm running. I've uh, been playing a lot of basketball lately. I try to listen to podcasts and I just can't, dude. I just can't. I try, but um, there's just times where I'm just like, nah, dude. Give me some fucking Metallica. Give me some Drake. Give me some. Give me some. Uh, I don't know, dude. Whatever. I'll be fucking listening to anything. I'll listen to any fucking music, dude. 
as long as it's giving me a good adrenaline rush. But I, I can't listen to podcasts at the gym, dude. I just I try and I just can't, dude. But shout out to whoever uh, if you're if you're at a, uh, if you're at, at the gym and you're listening to any podcast, whether it's this one or another one, shout out to you. That's fucking kind of cool. Uh, that's like a different level of patience right there. Or, or uh, to me, that's a different level of self control, and I think that's pretty fucking cool. But anyways, hello everybody. Lots to talk about on this episode of the podcast. It's just me, myself, and I on this one. I kind of enjoy the ones. I enjoy doing solo podcasts. I got used to it. For a while, I'm just like, man, what the fuck am I doing, dude? I'm over here talking to myself into a microphone for like an hour. But, you know, it's cool. I, I like it. Now, uh, if, if this is your first time listening to this podcast, that's totally cool. Welcome. I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Thanks for the download. Uh, if you like what you're hearing so far, I'd be sure to recommend this to a friend or whatever you want to do. You know, go ahead. Um, but you, sometimes uh, on this podcast, I'll have a guest over and we'll talk about, you know, everything. But we like to mostly cover everything, all things current events. Everything from the world of pop culture to every now and then we'll hit some world news and uh, some current issues. Um, now, we have talked about some big issues before on this podcast. Everything from the 2016 elections to now, which I kind of want to get started with. And I kind of want to talk about Puerto Rico. And I want to talk about Las Vegas. Um this is this is some crazy times that we're currently going through right now, right? There's no, there's no denying that we're seeing some deep dark shit going on in this world, right? We're seeing some intense acts of mother nature just being a total b- 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 bitch. And we're also seeing acts of terrorism and uh going down just within our own American soil. And I do my absolute best to keep this podcast as centered as I possibly can. I, a lot of people have come up to me and say, Phil, you're fucking liberal, bro. You're so fucking liberal. Some parts, yeah, dude. I, in some parts, I think I'm more liberal than I am conservative. There's no doubt about that. Uh, that's my personal thing. You know, this is not the Philip Acevedo podcast. This is the Axial Skeleton podcast. I don't really try to express too much of my own personal views out there. Um, I do my best not to. Sometimes I'll I'll fucking rant for like two minutes, and I'm like, holy shit, what I, what, what just happened? Did I just rant for two minutes? Yeah, I totally ranted for two minutes. So what? Uh, when it comes to stuff like this that we've been experiencing. And what our government has been doing, it's really hard for me to keep it centered, you know? Like, I'll just, um, you know, I welcome all listeners to this podcast. I welcome uh, liberals. I I welcome conservatives. I welcome vegans. I welcome carnivores. I welcome CrossFit gym bros. I I welcome all types of people into the, to just give this podcast a chance, give it a listen, give it a whatever. You know, and if you follow us on social media, that's even cool, too. That's fucking awesome. But when it comes to big issues such as Puerto Rico, when it comes to big issues such as Las Vegas, I do my best to keep it centered. Um, I've had semi debates, I guess. I've had somewhat debates on this podcast before in the past. Um, But right now, there's some stuff where I'm just like, what in the fuck is going on with these people? Why is it so hard why is Trump going to Puerto Rico and he's talking about how much of a burden they are to our budget? I don't understand, man. <laughs> like, I really don't understand. Like, so Puerto Rico goes down, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, I'm scratching my head whenever I hear the news that Trump dedicated his golf trophy. His he, he So he won this golf tournament, right? And he dedicated his trophy to Puerto Rico. Like, <laughs> okay, motherfucker, like... I dedicate this trophy to Puerto Rico. Here, right here. Check this out. So I Just check this out. Congratulate the internationals on this really is, being. Amazing. This is him. You played very well today, by the way. Just in the last couple of days. And on behalf of all of the people of Texas and all of the people. Oh boy, of, the bag's all vaping or what? Today and you see what's happening, how horrible it is, but we have it under really great control. Puerto Rico and the people of Florida who have really suffered 
over this last short period oh, of man. time with the hurricanes. Here it is. I want to just Here it is. remember them, and we're going to dedicate this trophy to all of those people that went through so much <laughs> that we love, a part of our great state, really a part of our great nation. <laughs> okay, man. All right, so you're gonna, so the people of Puerto Rico, uh, I don't know if, as of now, I don't know if they still are without electricity or internet, but at the time... They didn't have any of these things. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have internet. I'm just like, yeah, sure, motherfucker. We'll take your golf trophy. Sure. We don't have any clean water. We don't have any electricity. But yeah, sure. We'll take your trophy. man. <laughs> Come on. That's what I'm just saying, man. I'm just like, ah. Oh, okay, okay. And um, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm pretty sure there's a few out there that are just like, man, Phil, you're so fucking anti-Trump, bro. You're a fucking snowflake. You're a fucking liberal. And you know what, dude? At the beginning of the presidency, I wasn't, of course, I didn't, I didn't vote for Trump. I didn't vote for Trump. All right? I wasn't voting. I'm not a Trump supporter. I wasn't voting for Trump. Um, but once, you know, so he wins the presidency and I'm just like, you know what? Uh, I don't know what to think, man. I'm just like, huh? What do I, well, I guess Trump is the fucking president now. So, um, Hmm. Um, the Saturday night live, I think it's the weekend after Trump is elected president. Dave Chappelle, one of my role models, like gets on fucking stage and I'll never forget this fucking speech. Um, but towards the end of the speech of uh, the, the open monologue, right? That when he was hosting SNL, uh, this is back in like what November 2016, almost a year ago. Jeez, um, you know he said something like, you know, I'm gonna give Trump a chance. You know, he's just like me. He didn't vote for Trump, but I'm gonna give him a chance. I just hope that he gives us a chance as well. And I just sat there and I was like, fucking powerful words right there from Dave Chappelle, and I enjoyed it. You know, I I I thought to myself, yeah, you know, I agree with that. Yeah, sure, I'm, I'm gonna give Trump a chance as well. You know, and then. We got the travel ban, and then we get all this. The rest is history, you know. So I'm at the point where I'm just like, nah, man, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't give you any more chances, dude. This is like, this is it. And you, 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 you come to this nation, you come visit, and you hear all these things about Trump and his administration. I'm just thinking to myself, dude, this is embarrassing, man. Like, I can't, I, I just don't know. I, I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm off the Trump wagon, I've been off of it already, I just can't give him any more chances, anything that happens, I'll listen, but I'm just, you know, I don't know, man, I'm just, I'm done, I'm done with Trump, dude, I'm done, but that's my personal thing, that's not the Axial Skeleton, the Axial Skeleton will continue to post news about Trump and stuff like that, and when it comes to posting a published story, it will remain centered. There's not going to be any bias and there's not going to be any fake news or anything like that, you know? I'm going to try my best to keep it centered. I write most of these uh, stories anyway, so I got to just state the facts. You know, I can't put any personal bias aside. And by any stretch of the imagination, I am not going to, like, I, I don't have uh, an expertise in, in political science. I'm not even going to pretend that I have an expertise in gun control. I'm not going to have an expertise. I'm not going to pretend that I have an expertise in mental health. I'm not going to pretend that I have an expertise in <laughs> fucking journalism. <laughs> I'm just calling it the way I see it, man. I'm just expressing certain views and thoughts on these issues. And right now... It, it, it's it's crazy is it, it's i'm at the point where it's like fuck dude this is embarrassing dude the rest of the world is just kind of just looking at us and it's just like really america you, you you know your president goes to puerto rico and compares their devastation with another devastation known as hurricane katrina you know i'm just i'm just like that that really happened i'm gonna pull that up i'm gonna pull that video up right now too so that way you guys can listen in case you guys didn't see it there's a part where it's like, he's like a real catastrophe known as Hurricane Katrina. I'm just like, wow, here it is. Watch. Check it out. I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. Because <laughs> we've spent a lot of money on Puerto Rico, and that's fine. We've saved a lot of lives. If you look at the... Uh, every death is a horror. But if you look at a real catastrophe like oh, man. Katrina, and you look at the tremendous... Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that died. And you look at what happened here with really a storm that was just 
totally overpowering. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. And what is your what is oh, your death man. count as of this moment? Seven. What's this? Sixteen certified. Sixteen people certified. Sixteen people versus in the thousands. Now I hate to tell you, this is like why 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 compare? You know, oh, uh, Hurricane Katrina, you know, was worse than Hurricane. What is this one, Maria or Irma? I think this is Maria. I think I could be wrong, <laughs> but I'm just thinking to myself, I, dude, this is crazy. Like he literally goes to Puerto Rico, and and I don't care about the whole tossing paper towels part. If you've seen that picture online, that's one thing. But going to Puerto Rico and comparing it, he's like, yeah, your guys's uh, your guys's budget has been a real burden to us, and not to not to mention the fact that Hurricane Katrina was a worser. Uh, <laughs> hurricane than the one that you're facing currently now, and I'm just like, fuck off, Trump! Oh my god, dude, this is this is bad, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> but anyways, man, um, I don't know. Just shout out to to the people in Puerto Rico. I hope you're pulling through. I hope everything's coming out great, man. I, I, it's just time to rebuild and just stay positive, man. Just keep going. Just rebuild and keep those positive vibes. Keep going, man. You just have to keep the high energy alert keep it up and like i said at the beginning of the podcast there's websites that you can go and visit that way you can make some certain donations if you'd like to help out the people of puerto rico i'm pretty sure they'll greatly appreciate it um and then it takes us over to las vegas and i'm just thinking to myself um a a lot of people uh who know me i'm a big fan of of uh satire shows such as like uh, the colbert report man i miss that show so much even though I, he's on late night now um stephen colbert but i'm watching a lot of trevor noah and dude i thought he nailed it so great with the issue with las vegas and how fox news is having such a hard time processing the fact that the guy who shot up all those people in las vegas killed what was it what's the total number 59 and over 500 injured Fox News is having such a hard time processing the information. They're saying something like, Bin Laden, we knew how to hate him. But how can we hate this guy right here? I'm like, motherfucker, he just killed 59 people and injured 500. How do you not... uh, You mean to tell me you're having a hard time hating this person? Oh, is it because he's rich and he's white? Because he's not Muslim and stuff like that? I'm just like, wow, Fox News. You guys too. You guys are a whole bunch of fucking schmucks. (laughs) And um, let me pull up this clip right here from Fox News. Oh, it's actually called Fox News has a hard time processing the Las Vegas. All right, here we go. And if they... Let me pull it up a little bit. Here we go. On to the story that everyone in here America has Check been it out. My boy Trevor Noah Mass over here. in Las Vegas. Today, we learned more details about the shooter. Hmm. He was a 64-year-old man from Florida uh, with no criminal record, and he owned 42 guns. Oh, and also, apparently, he was a multi-millionaire. All right. Which means right now, he doesn't fit any profile of any mass shooter. And you know who's having a hard time processing all of that information? The good people at Fox News. Oh, here it is. Here's the other thing. Bin Laden, we knew who to hate. You know, you saw Sandy Hook, we knew that mutant living in his basement. We don't even know enough about him to hate him yet. Oh, my God. That is so true. Oh, my God. How do you hate someone who's killed 59 people? (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. I'll let you guys watch the rest of the clip. You can go on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah on the YouTube channel, and you can pull up. It's a nine-minute clip. Go ahead and enjoy that. Watch it. It's funny, and it's just like it just makes me look at the fucking mass media I'm not just I'm not just a Fox News hater. Don't get me wrong, dude. CNN has fucked up so many times, countless times too. Compared to but compared to Fox News, come on, dude. Fox News is just the heavyweight champion of f- fucking up news outlets. <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, it's it, it's insane. The whole Las Vegas thing. Um, it's I'm not gonna like like I said earlier. I'm not even gonna pretend that I have an expertise in gun control or mental illness. I'm just saying. I, but I do notice one thing when it comes to mass shootings, and there is this cycle. There is this cycle. The cycle begins with the event. And this event, in this case, it's a mass shooting, unfortunately, right? And, it be, and the cycle continues by the government saying some stuff, saying like, oh, 
there, now is not the time to politicize this event. Now is not the time to talk about gun control. Then there's people that is going to be that are going to oppose those statements and be like, okay, well, if now is not the time to talk about this stuff. Then when the fuck is the time to talk about this stuff? Um, there's there's that also, right? Now the cycle continues. Now follow me here. The cycle is going to continue with political debates, whether it be the guy that never, uh, the guy that's on Facebook having political debates, he's going to state one outrageous thing on his Facebook timeline, right? He's going to expect a whole bunch of people to come attack him or vice versa. You know, this person might join a comment section where he's just going to be there for like the next eight hours debating with some people he may never meet in his life. Now the cycle continues by our lawmakers talking about gun control, finally talking about mental health finally like they really want to do something like they have this momentum the 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 event gave them this momentum to really have a conversation with each other with one another and slowly but surely these conversations begin to fade and we're now at the beginning of our cycle which will be another terrorist attack okay and for the record, I am one of the fucking people that are claiming this person, this shooter. I'm not even going to name his name because he doesn't deserve enough fame. But this guy is a fucking terrorist. Plain and simple. He's a fucking terrorist. How can you not call him a terrorist? Come on. He's a terrorist. Just because he's not Muslim, just because he's not black, just because he's not uh, anything besides white and rich, he's still a fucking terrorist. Okay? For the record, I just want to name that right there. Um, but that's the cycle that I'm talking about. We've seen this cycle unfortunately too many times and there and there's also you're going you're also going to be it also opens up subdivisions as well uh these cycles are going to open up some subdivisions as far as conspiracy theories you're already hearing some of these already now i'm just i'm just it, 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 i'm just flabbergasted about how, how like <laughs> how like our government doesn't even want to talk about these issues right now. They're like, they're, it's like, oh, we can't talk about gun control right now. I'm not saying, I'm not one of those people that are saying, oh, we need to get rid of every fucking gun. Believe me, um, I think guns are pretty cool. I actually like guns. They're pretty cool. I don't know, you know, I don't own one, but I've shot a few. I've shot, I've shot an AR-14, or what's it called, AR-15? The gun nuts. Help me out here. What's it called, AR-15? Yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm not a gun fanatic, but I have shot some guns, and they fucking they fucking feel great. I like them. I think they feel awesome. I like guns. Um, I've shot a few in my life. Uh, they're really cool. I dig them. Uh, I'm not a gun fanatic. I just I I totally understand why a lot of people love guns the same way a lot of people love cars the same way a lot of people love uh, anything really. You know, guns to some, to a lot of people it's a hobby. You know, I uh, totally. One hundred percent get it. I get it, but I just don't think we are just going to ignore regulations. Like I think something needs to be done for sure. I think uh, you know when you're trying to get a driver's license, you're going to be driving with somebody to to get that driver's license, right? There's a test. You know, uh, I think when it comes to guns, I think uh, something needs to be done as well. Some kind of testing, some kind of psych test, maybe, maybe some kind of, um, you know, some test that you got to take in order because it's so easy to buy a gun these days. Right. I'm no gun expert. So gun uh, experts out there, help me out. Like, what do I got to do if I want to buy me like a sick ass machine gun? Like, is there a long process that I have to go through? I think there should be, man. I really think so. Like, I think guns, don't get me wrong, man. I'm not some liberal crazy nut that says, oh, ban all guns. Because that's not going to help, dude. If drugs are illegal, people can still find drugs, dude. It's it's possible, right? Yes. So, I'm not saying ban all guns. I'm just saying I think it should be a little harder to get fucking crazy assault rifles, dude. Like AR-15s, like AK-47s, all that shit, you know? I think it should just be a little harder. I think it should start regulating uh, gun laws a little more... Be a little more strict. Um, but yeah. So, like I said, man, <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend like I have an expertise in all these things, man. I'm just calling it the way I see it. 
I'm just the kind of person that would like to think that I, you know, I'm kind of a deep thinker. I think of a lot of shit, dude. I think of a lot of deep shit. But um, I think it's time that we move on a little bit. So let's let's move on to a different topic, man. This is like the socio political hour with Philip Acevedo. I'm not. That's not the kind of podcast, dude. In this podcast, we talk about a lot of things, buddy. So. Let's do it. Let's move on to a different topic. Let's go on. What do I got on the list, man? Hugh Hefner, fucking dead. Oh, damn. You know, a couple of people have passed on to another dimension, another life, another alternate reality or or whatever you want to believe in. But uh, Tom Petty, wasn't. I wasn't really big on Tom Petty. I mean, I know, I've always known who he was. Um, I think he's got that one song that I've always liked. Um, and I won't back down. Um. Yeah, dude, I'm totally destroying it. I'm sorry. I've never, I never really got into Tom Petty. Um, it's not really my thing. But uh, one person that I did kind of get into, for sure, thanks to uh, you know, <laughs> nice written articles, was Hugh Hefner. Man, Hugh Hefner passed, and I was just like, "Fuck, dude! Oh man!" Well, the guy was pretty old too already, right? He was already like what ninety, ninety one, something like that. And, and yeah, man, I was just like, oh shit, damn, I, I honestly haven't heard from him in a long time. I, I, I don't know what he's been up to, but a lot of people, uh, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of guys out there have the, have this thing where it's like, oh, Hugh Hefner lived like the ultimate lifestyle, dude. That, that dude used to fuck so many chicks, dude, so many life. I always wondered too, and it's a question of mine that I've always had since, uh, forever, man, since I was like in junior high, high school. I was like, dude, how many total do you think Hugh Hefner has, you know? <laughs> with I'm just thinking to myself like I want to say somewhere like about a hundred maybe even more in his life no way dude someone like Hugh Hefner I don't know he had a wife right I mean to some people that would stop a person yes <laughs> I don't know but um you know Hugh Hefner did change he did revolutionize and I'll talk though real talk though Hugh Hefner really did revolutionize the entire p- publishing industry back in the day by introducing everybody to playboy magazine playboy magazine had just something different it had it had very beautiful women posing nude and it also has some pretty interesting articles too has anybody actually ever read a playboy article they're they're actually pretty good i've read a couple and they're pretty dope dude like they're um it's about lifestyle certain lifestyle about fashion about there's there's a lot if you just pick up any playboy magazine there's actually some pretty cool articles that you'll find um but let's be honest it's not always about the articles when it comes to playboy <laughs> nah i thought i always and i always thought playboy was cool for keeping it classy too because if you if you listen um if you listen if you uh look at other uh n- nude model magazines they show everything they hold they show the whole nine yards when it comes to women right uh, Playboy kept it classy by not being too too hardcore with their stuff, with their nude photos, and I always thought that was pretty cool. I always, thought, I always, I always respected that because it was a class act. Um, and then uh, just days after his death, it's Hollywood takes over, right? Hollywood's like, we want to make a Hugh Hefner biopic film, and so director Brett Ratner, you might know him from. The guy that directed Rush Hour 1, Rush Hour 2. He also did X-Men 3. Yeah, he did X-Men, The Last Stand. Remember that one? With Phoenix? The crappy one. Yeah, the first crappy uh, X-Men movie. I didn't really like that one. That was kind of like whatever. I loved X-Men 2. That was cool. There's a lot of X-Men movies, dude, uh, but the third one was kind of whatever. But, um, yeah, so Brett Ranner is in... He said something that he wants Jared Leto to uh, star as Hugh Hefner. And um, what do you guys think of that? I mean, Jared Leto is kind of on top of the world right now, don't you think? And he's got Blade Runner coming out this week, which I cannot fucking wait to watch. <laughs> I am so stoked for Blade Runner. For those who know me, Blade Runner, the first one with Harrison Ford, is one of my all-time favorite films. It, I think it's a, I think it's a masterpiece, dude. I think it's a fucking masterpiece and i cannot wait to see the sequel i'm hearing great reviews on it so far i'm excited i even hear that jared leto is actually really good in this as well i even read an advice article 
how originally the filmmakers and the producers of Blade Runner 2049 originally wanted David Bowie to be um, the role that now Jared Leto is playing, which would have been cool with me, man. David Bowie was a good actor, but I would have been sick to see him in Blade Runner. I would love to see him in Blade Runner. That would have been great, man. Um, But yeah, so... Jared Leto as playing Hugh Hefner for the Playboy, or I'm sorry, the Hugh Hefner biopic. Uh, I think that's pretty cool, I guess. I mean, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, you you got the homeboy from uh, iRobot playing Freddie Mercury in the Freddie Mercury movie. What's his name? Malik Rahman? I think his name is. I think his name, the name is Malik Rahman. I want to say it's Malik Rahman. I don't know. It's one of those. But yeah. Um, yeah, man, let's move on. What else we got? Um, moving over from movies and all that stuff, uh, I want to talk a little bit. So last week, I think it was, what what was it? Friday? Last week it was Friday. I was, I heard that the Super Nintendo mini classic was released and it was, there was people lining, uh, lining up at stores. There's people camping out outside. I actually know a couple of people shout out to David and AD they actually camped outside of a Best Buy, I believe, and they were trying. To, they got themselves a Super Nintendo, and I actually got mine later in the afternoon. I don't. Uh, I didn't stand in line. I didn't camp outside. I actually had work in the morning, so I was like, "Fuck, dude! Well, there goes my chance at getting a Super Nintendo." And I got one when I got off of work. I was like, "Fuck yeah!" So what I did is I paid an extra thirty dollars more, and I uh, bought it some from some fucking guy online. And I tested it out. And has everybody used the app uh, offer up? Yeah, I tried that out. Um, I've done it before. I've tried it before, but um, it's been a long time since I've tried it again. And I'm like, dude, I really would love a fucking Super Nintendo because I've I used to have one. And I, that's like one of my favorite old um, consoles from back in the day. And I was like, dude, I kind of need this because last year I didn't get the uh, the regular Nintendo Classic. What's cool about these these retro games that the co- game consoles that they're bringing back? What's cool about it is that all the major games are found in, already inside of it. Now, of course, people have done that already before with um, you know the stuff that you can find at Swap Meets. Like Swap Meets have been doing this for a long time already. You can also download emulators that are that can do this. But I just thought it was cool. I just like I just think it's something that I would like to have. Uh, I wanted to buy me the Super Nintendo Classic. Because all my favorite class uh, SNES games are already found inside. And what's really cool about it is it's got HDMI cables. You just hook it up to your TV and the picture looks beautiful, dude. 16-bit, never looks so sexier. It was great. Um, I actually enjoyed it. And it's cool. I'm looking at it right now. It's so small. It's like it's tiny. It's, it's like it's smaller than the average. Um, it's smaller than the original um, Super Nintendo but this is cool. It comes with two controllers. They're actually longer because I remember um, I didn't I didn't buy the regular Nintendo Classic that came out last year. But I do know that it had like some short ass cables, like tiny. You have to be like super close to the TV to play this fucking thing. It was almost it was insulting. Um, so this one, Nintendo listened to the crit- criticisms that the regular Nintendo um, Mini got last year. So they made these controllers actually longer. The cables. Why don't you just fucking make them wireless, dude? They should have made them wireless. But whatever. Um, it's cool. I actually like it a lot. And you don't have to insert uh, game cartridges inside. You don't have to blow inside and stuff like that to have it work. Um, all the games are inside already. It's got Legend of Zelda. It's got Star Fox. It's got Super Mario World. I fucking love this thing. And it's going to take over my life. <laughs> I'm playing... Uh, what's it got? It's got Contra. It's got some great shit in it. I fucking love it. I'm really happy that, this, that I own this thing. I'm very... Uh, I'm thinking to myself too, so... I have this theory that Nintendo realizes that this is the age of nostalgia. This is the age where guys my age are so fucking nostalgic that they're just like, oh, man. So they're capitalizing on this. They're capitalizing on this uh, movement, this nostalgic movement that's going on. You go to There's video game um, conventions where it's nothing but freaking retro gaming conventions. Like, you can go and play arcade games and stuff with other people. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, 
but I think Nintendo is capitalizing on this. They see that a lot of fucks like my age are very nostalgic. So they're bringing back game consoles like what they did last year with Nintendo. They brought back the super, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, original Nintendo Mini Classic that you can find the games are already inside, blah, 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 right? And it sold out quick. Like, Nintendo got criticized because they didn't make enough of these fucking things, right? So it sold out quick. So the following year, this year, they do the same thing, but this time it's a Super Nintendo Classic. So they're bringing back the Super Nintendo. They make it nicer than the one last year. It's got some cool games in it, you know? So, like, people are capitalizing, and it sells out. Boom. Again. It sells out again, right? So I'm thinking to myself, okay, boom. Nintendo is seeing this. They're seeing this tra- the, this 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 trend that's going on right now, like uh, retro gaming is making a huge comeback. Right? Well, I wouldn't say that retro gaming is making a comeback. I'm saying because there was no retro gaming back then. <laughs> um, I guess retro gaming is hot right now. I guess right. I guess that's a good way to put it. Retro gaming is very hot right now. Everyone's getting, especially the nostalgic guys like myself. You know. So what I'm thinking, my think, my theory is next year, you heard it here first, okay? <laughs> next year, I'm thinking Nintendo is going to drop the Nintendo 64 Classic. Just what they've been doing with Nintendo and Super Nintendo. I'm thinking next year they're going to do the Nintendo 64 Classic. It's going to have HDMI cables. It might even have uh, wireless remote controllers. That'd be cool. So that's my theory. I'm thinking I would love to see that. But the thing is, I still have my regular. Uh, I still have my Nintendo 64, so I don't know if I'm going to get it. I haven't owned a uh, Super Nintendo in decades, so I, it was very important that I fucking got this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, that's Nintendo talk. Um, everyone out there, if you got yourself a Super Nintendo Mini Classic, what do you think of it? Are you enjoying it as much as I am? Because I sure as am. I sure as hell am. I'm fucking. I fucking love this thing. This thing's awesome. Um, you know, uh, right before I go to sleep, I'll play some Super Mario World, right, uh, or maybe some Legend of Zelda. Um, yeah, this has got some really awesome games in there. Mega Man X. Oh my god, Mega Man X. Yes, Mega Man X. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. I enjoy it. So yeah, let's move on. All right, moving on. To sports! Hey, it's a sports hour. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> I really don't keep track with sports right now unless, uh, well, basketball season's starting. Uh, Celtics, uh, my boys are back. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see Isaiah Thomas uh, function with the Cavs, with ha- him and LeBron. I want to see how they're going to do. Um, but that's pretty much all I got right now. Sucks for sports, but just in, just right now. So Cam Newton. God damn it, Bruce. Hang on. My fucking dog is barking. Because he fucking likes to bark for every little thing. God damn it. All right. So, so what I was going to say about Cam Newton. Uh, did you guys hear about this? This just went down apparently today, just right now. So, Cam Newton. Uh, <laughs> so, he, I guess he's uh, under fire right now. So, so the NFL already, all eyes are on the NFL right now because uh, football players are taking a knee during the national anthem, all that shit, all that bullshit. Uh, where do I stand on that? Um, dude, take a fucking knee, whatever, dude. I think it's weird that people put their hands over their hearts already, but I don't think there's anything disrespectful to our troops in anything for if they're going to take a knee. Taking a knee has nothing to do with troops or anything like that. It's about the injustice that's been happening within our country. That's that's their symbol right there. All right? It's, it's nothing against the troops. It's nothing against... Uh, I got nothing but love for people who have uh, serviced our country. Um, but uh, so Cam Newton is kind of like uh, under fire because... Cam Newton, I, I barely, I know who Cam Newton is. He's the he's a Carolina Panthers uh, quarterback, right? Or am I just tripping? Right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so this dude, he he uh, he's at a press conference, and people are asking him like, "Hey, there's a female uh, journalist that asks him, hey, so what are you going to be doing about technical stuff, right? Tech- She's asking him technical questions about football." And he just says, I just think it's funny that a female is asking me questions about routes or something like that. Let's take a listen. I take a lot of pride in seeing your receivers 
play well. Devin Funches has seemed to really yeah. embrace the physicality of it is. his routes and, and making routes. Getting those extra I don't know what yards. routes mean. Does that give you a little bit of an enjoyment to see him kind of trust sticking people out there? It's funny to hear a female talk about routes. Like, it's funny. <laughs> That stupid uh, smirk. Oh, uh, man. So, yeah, anyway, so <laughs> I, I don't know. that. I think that smile right there is, gonna, is meme quality right there. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, so I don't think it uh, – let's see. Let's see. What are, uh, this literally just happened right now. I, sure, it's um, maybe – I don't know. I don't think Cam Newton's – I don't know. I really don't know anything about Cam Newton. I don't know how he is in real life. I don't even follow – I don't even fucking follow football. For all I know, maybe he's just surprised that a female actually knows so much about this sport. Because let's face it, this is a male-dominated sport. You know, NFL. There's a lot. I'm sure not, there's a lot of female NFL fans out there, right? But um, let's face it. You know, this is more of a male-dominated sport. And he probably hasn't seen that many female journalists talking about these so-called these things called routes, whatever these routes things are. But I don't know. I just thought that was funny. And watch by tomorrow. I'm pretty sure, maybe even tonight, maybe tonight, we're expecting a Cam Newton tweet coming from your very own President Donald J. Trump. So, be on the lookout for that. All right, so let's get the hell out of here. I want to keep it nice and short today. This has been a short podcast. Um, Remember, if, uh, if you feel the need to donate to Puerto Rico or to Las Vegas, you can go to... For Puerto Rico, you can go to unicefusa.org. You can also go to the redcross.org. You can go to directrelief.org. There are many, uh, you have options right here where you can donate some money to help our friends out in Puerto Rico. And go check out the GoFundMe.com for the Las Vegas Victims Fund. Right now, they are at, I'm pulling up right now, I'm refreshing the page. Where we're at right now? GoFundMe, GoFundMe, GoFundMe. We're at $8.9 million. Their goal is to hit $10 million. Um, Let's make it happen, guys. So it's a terrible tragedy that went down in Las Vegas. It's an act of terrorism. All right? It's terrorism. Fuck yeah. Um, It's fucking terrorism. I don't mean fuck yeah as in like cheering way. No, I'm saying fuck yeah. It's terrorism, you know? (laughs) But um, yeah, so just be on the lookout for yourselves man take care of yourselves take care of each other it's uh we're going through some dark times right now there's no doubt about it there's no hiding it there's no denying it um but just take care of yourselves and each other as my favorite talk show host jerry springer would always say at jerry's final thought all right so i want to thank you guys for tuning in to the exoskeleton podcast this has been episode 114 with philip acevedo that's me you can find me on instagram i'm at feel free or die hard you can find the axial skeleton you uh we are on instagram at, at a x i a l underscore skeleton also on twitter a x i underscore skeleton and you can find me on twitter as well i'm at bruce phyllis okay bruce phyllis okay so hit me up on twitter anytime if you want to have a conversation if you want to correct me on my guns because i really don't know very much about guns i don't know my fully automatics for my semi-automatics i'm not a gun freak man i think guns are pretty cool but i'm just not a gun freak so that is it for me i'm out of here you guys have a great rest of the week take care of yourselves also, be on the lookout for episode 115 of the Axial Skeleton Podcast. We got some pretty good stuff happening in the near future. We are actually, I'm going to be at Pasadena for DesignerCon in November. I hope that's not during the time for the, uh, the fucking, the, the fight. No, 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 no. So, um, so I will be in Pasadena uh, walking around with my camera November 11th and the 12th. Look, be on the lookout for Axial Skeleton t-shirts. Be walking around. Hang out with us. Say hello. We'll be there um, November 11th and 12th in Pasadena at the Pasadena Pasadena Convention Center for DesignerCon. And if you would like to attend DesignerCon, check out DesignerCon on Instagram. DesignerCon. You can purchase tickets on their website www.designercon.com We will be there. Uh, I'll be there as press, so I'll be wor- walking around. If you would like to be in to uh, check out, uh, check us out on for the recap video, of course. there's always, Every event I go to, I always make a recap video. There's been probably one, maybe two that I haven't because we had terrible video and audio quality, but... 
We're stepping our game up. So lots of exciting things happening within the Axial Skeleton world and the Axial Skeleton universe. It's all happening. Make your fucking dreams come true. Don't just work a 9 to 5 that you hate for the rest of your life. Do things that you want to do. All right. I don't know where I got the deep philosophical motivation from. I'm not a philosopher. I'm not an influencer. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm just a guy that likes to fucking talk. Sometimes I can say some pretty deep shit. All right. That has been episode 114 of the Exoskeleton Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys for episode 114. Until then, stay focused, stay sharp, and Axial on.